Hello everyone, welcome back to the session of Arima. In the previous few sessions, we have discussed the AR process, the MA process and the Arima process also. Now, in this session, we will extend this AR, MA and Arima process into Arima model. This is the last part of Arima process, entire Arima process where the data will be non-stationary. That means in the previous couple of models of ARIMA that we have discussed, whether it is AR, MA or ARMA, we assume that data are stationary. So, the over a period of time data are stable. But if the data are non-stationary, I have already discussed that earlier, but we will concentrate on that part now. When the data are non-stationary, you cannot directly use AR or MA process or ARMA process. You need to first convert the non-stationary data into stationary and then you can start your ARIMA model. So, ARIMA model is only for non-stationary data. So, the process if you look at the screen here, we have completed the basic understanding of ACF and PACF function because these are the two important ingredients or components which is required for the entire ARIMA process. right? because you need to read the graph, the choreogram and understand the order of AR and MA process. So, that for that reason we need ACF and PACF. We understood that. Then we have completed the AR process, the MA process and ARMA process. Now, we will be concentrating on ARIMA, right? ARIMA. Remember, ARIMA is nothing but when the data are of stationary, then only you can use ARIMA. So, effectively, if the data are non-stationary, you convert the data, say time series data, if the time series data are non-stationary, you convert them into stationary. This is the differencing part or I part. This comes as a integrated. This term is noted as integrated. I will discuss more detail about it. And then once the data are become stationary, how to do that, how to convert non-stationary into stationary, that we will discuss. And then you check once the data becomes stationary, either you use as it, as it is, AR process or MA process or ARMA process. So, effectively there is no ARIMA, ARIMA is all put together ARIMA only if data are non-stationary. If the data are stationary, your model completes here only. If data are stationary, you just either use AR process or MA process or ARMA process, ARIMA will not come into the picture. If the data are non-stationary, then only the enter steps you have to do. That means first convert the non-stationary data into stationary. Then AR process as per the choreogram graph, AR or MA or ARMA and you complete the ARIMA process. So, let us go to the last part, last leg of entire ARIMA process that is called ARIMA, autoregressive integrated moving average process, right, for non-stationary data. Now, if we talk about non-stationary data, you can recall the initial session, different type of data pattern that we have discussed or different type of you know data understanding of time series data, there we have discussed detail about stationary and non-stationary data. Let us recap that for a while. So, if the data are stationary, what happens? You can see that this data, there is a variation, but it falls inside a band line, right, to some extent. The out layer or too, some of, too, uh, too much of, you know, uncertainty is not involved here. So, if you take any block of data, you can see the mean, variance, standard deviation, etc., correlation all are to some extent constant. Here if you think the mean is here for this data block, you go to say next 3 months or say next couple of period further, if you can calculate the mean, look at the mean is almost same, almost same. Little variation will be there, if the data are straight line, then there is no point of prediction, right. So, little variation could be there, but overall data are steady. So, this type of data are called stationary data, for which you can use AR or MA or ARMA, right you can use any one of them. But if the data are non-stationary, in that case what happens? That basic definition says that data are non-stable, right? So, here if you think for this block, for a couple of in the middle of the data, if you take a 3 months uh, period data, you can see the mean is here, but if you come here, you can think the mean is here, you can calculate that. So, therefore, mean has been shifted, mean has been shifted, right? So, you can see the changes of mean. Next time you do not know where the data will go, it might come back here also. So, it is unpredictable. So, therefore, this type of data are called as a non-stationary data. To some extent, uh, uptrend 
or non uh, down trend data or you know signal data are also falls under to some extent non stationary pattern. But here we are assuming that the pure non stationary whether data are to some extent random in nature stochastic in nature and it is not steady the mean is shifting from time to time. So, therefore, this data we will be considering as a part of ARIMA discussion ARIMA not ARMA or ARMA that we have done only for stationary purpose. Now, let us think about that. So, suppose this is a non stationary data you have to convert that into stationary data and then you use whatever the model that we have discussed so far in the previous sessions. Now, the point here is that if the data are non stationary we are discussing the non stationary data right. If the data are non stationary how to convert non stationary data into stationary. One part I told about that you can take the logarithm you can use some scaling of the data the scale change you can do that many way you can do the uh, like you know conversion from the non stationary to stationary. Remember that we have done the decentralization process in signality class how to do decentralization of the data by dividing with the index that also we understood. There are many way to manage the non stationary data to convert the non stationary data into stationary. Here we will understand one of the interesting uh, process called differencing of times non stationary data and that differencing process will use to convert the stationary and we will use that stationary data in the ARIMA process. Let us see how does it work. Suppose you have a time series data say time series data say y, y t c in general y 1, y 2, y 3, y 4, y 5, y 6, y 7 like this right you have the data. Now, what you do if you take a differencing of that say you know delta y equals to y t minus y t minus 1 say suppose minus 1. So, if you take this it is nothing but y 2 minus y 1, y 3 minus y 2, y 4 minus y 3, y 5 minus y 4, y 6 minus y 5. So, this way you know y 7 minus y 6 dot 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 you can calculate this this is called delta right delta y or delta y t whatever you can define or sometimes people define as a y t star or delta y t whatever you want right. So, this is the difference you need to use this will reduce the variation of the data. You can see one example and that data this particular differencing data these data sets these data sets you need to use for your further calculation of SCA, PSCA, BARMA process, MA process, AR process etcetera. This data you cannot use because these data are non stationary in case this is non stationary then you convert this into stationary by taking a differencing. This process are called to some extent integration process or differencing process therefore, we call it is a autoregressive integrated or differencing MA process. So, this is nothing but the differencing of ARIMA or I part of ARIMA. Let us see one example here you can see the data suppose sample data I have kept how this data if you plot this data it is uptrend data. But if you take a differencing of that 4 minus 5 it is coming out to minus 1. 6 minus 4 it is coming out to be 2, 7 minus 6 it is coming out to be 1, 9 minus 7 it is coming out to be 2, say 12 minus 3 9 it is coming out to be 3. So, if you draw this graph it will be like 5, 4, 6, 7, 9, 12 it is like this. But if you draw this graph it could be like say 1, minus 1, minus 1, uh, 2, 1, 2, 3 like the data are like this look at this. So, this is quite steady data. So, this data is been scaled down it has been converted into this differencing data. So, this data is to some extent you can see steady over a period of time if you take this is steady, but this data is uptrend data right uptrend data. So, you cannot take that data because it is non stationary to use for AR or MA process. So, you need this data you can take on another example say suppose you take a data say 2, 4, 7, 9, say 13 like this say it is uptrend data or downtrend data, but if you take a differencing 4 minus 2 will be 4 minus 2 will be 2, 7 minus 4 will be 3, say 9 minus 7 will be 2, 13 minus 9 will be 4. So, this if you draw this 2, 3, 2, 4 you see you can see data are steady. So, these data are converting into a steady data. So, this is called the differencing process you have to do that to scale down data to convert non stationary data non stationary data into a stationary data. In seasonality we have done here we are not talking about seasonality uptrend or downtrend or different zigzag data that we are converting through differencing process. In case if you think that first order differencing is not sufficient till the data suppose suppose your data are like this data are like this and if you do the first order differencing first round of differencing your data might be like this still it is a uptrend data right curvy data. So, if you do one more round of difference look at 
one more round of difference See here you can do delta say you know say delta star y t delta star y t say or delta 2 whatever you do one more round of differencing this minus this this value minus this value in excel you can do this right so you will get one round of data one round another in excel sheet you will get one other column so this is called one further round of difference second order differencing this data might be steady now suppose here we have done this is a first one main data yt data so this is a delta yt say and you found that this is also non stationary how to check the non stationary whether you have converted the data into stationary or not that will do in the next slide through the kepler test the testing part will do when to stop how many differencing you should do so that your you can confirm that data becomes stationary that part will discuss later but suppose you are seeing that your data are non stationary then you do one more round of differencing in that case your data might be to some extent steady you can think about this look at the third graph look at the third graph to some extent it is steady right it is steady so mean is not shifting much so therefore some epsilon error will be there but data has become said so now it is a this 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 differencing we have done say for this particular uh, data sets third round differencing second round differencing we have done so now data becomes stationary take this data the scale down data into your arima process arima process i part is over arima's enter discussion is over now suppose that means i part is over differencing is done now you go to ar ma or arima that's it this is what the enter process of differencing and arima let's see the next part that you have a time series data and you found that data are non stationary by drawing the graph or understanding the different calculation process then you need to convert it into stationary but the point here is that how many round of differencing you need to do one round of differencing two round of differencing three round of differencing you have to stop somewhere right so that you can start your arima process this i part has to be completed now so for that there is a you know checking criteria whether the data has converted into non stationary to stationary or not and when to stop that that been evaluated through dicky fuller test dicky fuller has evolved on methodology mathematical structure through which you can test the data in python and different software it is readily available but here i'll give you the technical aspects of the testing part how does it work so dicky fuller test says that this dicky fuller test will be used for data testing whether the data becomes stationary or not so non stationary data if you have let me use the pen again if you have a non stationary data how to convert that into stationary and when to stop this we are going to discuss now through the kepler test so it's a unit root test sometimes they call it a unit root root test which is a mathematical structure to check the stationarity of the data so let us consider a stochastic process where such that you know you, for your data so time series data yt y1 y2 y3 y4 y5 y6 like that you have and you can develop a you know formula like this say this is your error part say for the timing we are not focusing suppose you have found a correlation like in a linear formula of that of data with past data past lag and you found a correlation among them say so linear regression or whatever some relationship you found with your stochastic data process now if you subtract that yt minus 1 from yt you will find this formula right just from both side you subtract yt minus 1 yt minus yt so suppose y5 minus y4 like this yt minus yt minus 1 you will get this formula now you have a constant phi minus 1 minus 1 so this constant if it become zero after some round of iteration if this constant become zero your data differencing will become constant look at that the error part are there to some extent it's become zero so data become steady so no movement will be there now data become steady so therefore this difference will become zero zero if this become zero if this does not become zero then your data are non stationary still you need to do one more round of differencing and carry forward the testing part or differencing process so for that reason they proposed one hypothesis simple hypothesis that the hypothesis is that assume that phi minus 1 is zero as a null hypothesis an alternative hypothesis is that phi not equals to zero alternative is phi not equals to zero right so if phi minus 1 equals to zero that means phi equals to 1 say whatever we are assuming that phi no, phi minus 1 not equals to zero if you consider phi minus 1 not equals to zero effectively alternative hypothesis is active but if phi minus 1 equals to zero in that case your null hypothesis will be active it means that you stop there 
this becomes 0 means this term let me use the highlight point this term becomes 0 means this term become constant this term become constant so stop here you do not need to do further differencing further differencing you just stop here in first round or maybe after one round so this criteria checking throw non stationary criteria checking through hypothesis testing are done by Dickey Fuller to see whether the data becomes stationary or not. To illustrate it further, let us come to a fresh slide and I will explain in detail so that you know a layman person can also understand. If you go to regression, if you go to regression, suppose you have a data set say x and say y, right? You have the data and you can fit a regression line say y equals to alpha plus beta x right epsilon part we are not discussing suppose alpha plus beta x suppose you have fit a regression say and in that case what do you do in in ANOVA analysis for overall testing of regression and the individual variables also we are considering single variables say so we propose a null hypothesis right what is the null hypothesis beta equals to 0 and alternative is what beta not equals to 0 what does it mean in regression it means that if now if p greater than say 0 0.05 0 0.05 say 0 0.05 we say that null hypothesis is active and if p less than 0 0.05 we say that alternative is active so that means if alternative is active that means beta not equals to 0 so there is a relationship between y and x and you can fit your regression fit the regression fit the line right but if p is quite high greater than 0 0.05 then null hypothesis will active and in that case beta equals to 0 beta 0 means what there is no relationship between y and x so you cannot fit a regression line x is not explaining y or y is not explained by y so this is the basic understanding of regression analysis through an aval test and the hypothesis uh, concept we all know this one right now come back to our time series data suppose you have a time series data same concept we will use here now now suppose you have a time series data y y1 y2 y3 y4 y5 y6 dot 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 say so now if you take the differencing as i mentioned say yt minus yt minus 1 right so it is nothing but y2 minus y1 y3 minus y2 y4 minus y3, y5 minus y4 like this, this right. These are your first order differencing now. Now think about the basic AR model. Think about the basic AR model. What is the basic AR model? Generally, we write yt equals to alpha plus beta yt minus 1, right. This is what the basic and plus epsilon part will be there. This is what the basic AR model of order 1, correct. Now what do you do? We all know the basic AR model, AR model of order 1 let us consider. Let us consider the basic AR model, right. And then this is the basic formula of AR model we all know. Subtract yt minus 1 from both sides. The Dickey Fuller test we are understanding now. So now what do you do? yt minus, I know the hat part is there but overall the basic understanding I am trying to pass to you subtract y t minus 1 this part you can think about this y t minus 1 you it will be what alpha plus say beta minus 1 into y t minus 1 t minus 1 plus epsilon that we are not discussing right. So now what happened this is nothing but what this is nothing but your delta y t delta y t right. So the differencing is expressed in through this formula now. This is what I have subtracted yt minus 1 from both sides. So, it will be look like this. Now, this beta minus 1 is nothing but this phi minus 1 of this phi minus 1 of the stochastic process of Dickey Fuller test. Look at phi minus 1. Same logic. Now, what we will do? We will propose a hypothesis, say null hypothesis, say beta minus 1 equals to 0 and alternative we are proposing beta minus 1 not equals to 0. Now you do the p test, if p value check say 0 0.05, you can check if, if the test is significant what happens alternative is active, 
right if p less than 0 0.05 this null h1 is alternative is active now alternative hypothesis is active that means beta minus 1 not equals to 0 if beta minus 1 become not equals to 0 let me put a highlight point you will get to know if beta minus if beta minus 1 not equals to 0 what does it mean if not equals to 0 it means that this is not constant there is a relationship between the previous data and the current data so effectively what happens effectively what happens the data earlier you have taken and you have done the first order of differencing say still not this delta y say and this is y say this is still not stationary because beta minus 1 not equals to 0 not equals to 0 so h1 is active so you do one more round of differencing unless until the data becomes stationary but in case your test is insignificant and you found beta minus 1 equals to 0 that means null is active null is active in case null is active not the alternative is active suppose null is active then beta minus 1 equals to 0 null hypothesis is active if beta minus 1 equals to 0 what happens this part become 0 right so your data become constant data become data become constant so the differencing become constant if the differencing become constant what does it mean the data to some extent becomes stationary because this become constant right almost this look at this constant now little bit of variation will be there we are not focusing on that but beta minus 1 equals to 0 so it means that this data differencing is fixed now it's now steady now look at the data differencing first order differencing this is a delta delta yt right this is a delta yt this become steady now so delta yt steady means data become stationary you don't need to do further differencing stop there and go to AR or MA or ARMA process because data has become stationary now. But until unless your beta minus 1 or this differencing process does not hold true for null hypothesis, you need to continuously do the differencing process. Here I have mentioned here, you can see if the alternative hypothesis of the first degree of differencing cannot be accepted, we apply AR process because first differencing are not required in the beginning itself your data becomes stationary. But in case the alternative is accepted, alternative is accepted means what? H1 is active now, active now. In that case, what happens? If H1 is active, what happens? You need to do differencing process. Differencing of differencing, you continue that. Differencing of the degree D, first order differencing D could be 1, D could be initially. If the data are stationary, D will be 0. If data are non stationary, then do first order of differencing. Then you do the second order differencing, third order differencing, you continue this unless data become stationary. This is what the decay fuller test. And once it is done, you finalize your D, you stop the criteria from this exercise of hypothesis testing and complete the decay fuller test or non stationary to stationary conversion. This part is nothing but the non stationary to stationary conversion of data and the stopping criteria when to stop through Dickey Fuller test. There are many more methods, but Dickey Fuller test is very popular. I thought of explaining that. So, I believe it is clear now. Now, here you can see couple of examples. Suppose if D is one, only one round of differencing you are doing, right? In that case, you can select this model. Look at here, D equals to one. Generally, in ARMA process, in ARMA process, we use three component P, D, Q. P stands for AR model, we have already discussed that, AR model of order P, Q stands for order of MA model, we have already discussed that, D stands for the differencing part, the differencing, right. So if D is 1, then 1 round of differencing, if D is 2, 2 round of differencing, that means first initial data we are not stationary, you need 1 round of differencing and then take that data to your ARIMA process. Look at the illustration here, suppose this model. Here we can say that D equals to 0. So data are stationary, data are stationary. It is nothing but ARMA 2, 1 because D equals to 0, data are stationary, data are initial data were stationary, right. So you, your D is 0, you do not have to do differencing. Look at here, 2 actual data lack we have taken and 1 error. 
this is the new noise white noise new white noise of your model you do not have to think on that just think the main error the model combination this is the ar part this is the ma part right this is the ma part ma of order 1 AR of order 2. If you add that, how to add, when to select the ARMA process we have discussed when you are confused or you are not able to read the choreogram, in that case you can take that. Or you know only 2 lakh of uh, like PACF graph is positively standing uh, line and SCF has a single standing, in that case you can take that. Now look at this, this is what ARMA 3 1, 3 order of lakh, old lakh you are taking, say it would be T minus 3, sorry, and here only 1 error you are taking. Same logic, here you can think, it is we are simple taking AR1 model, but differencing D equals to 1. One round of differencing you have to do, then you select AR model. Look at one round of differencing you have done, and then simply you have, you have done the AR model. Look at alpha plus this. Some, some constant will be there, could be in your model, but this is the white noise part. This is what AR model. Look at this case. Here also, you have two order of differencing AR, AR210. What means that? you are not doing any MA process, just first round of differencing and then you are using your AR process. In case your model are like this, in case your model are like this say, uh, say 0, 1, 1, in that case you have to select say, you know, say gamma 1, epsilon 1 plus say error part. Note, here you have to take the first round of differencing say, you know, say delta, this data you have to take and then there delta yt data you have to take and then they are error part formula the MA process that I have talked about. Using this data you have to calculate your error part and the corresponding forecast. Then only you can develop this uh, model of MA, MA process with differencing data. Just take the differencing and follow the MA process, you will be able to get a forecast. But you have to take the differencing data because that data is stationary, the previous data, original data was non-stationary. So this way you can illustrate any type of AR, MA or ARIMA model, right? This is what the overall ARIMA process, autoregressive integrated moving average process. I believe it is clear to everybody. Now let us understand the overall steps of ARIMA. We have discussed the AR process, we have discussed the MA process, we have discussed the AR process, MA process together. Now we discussed the ARIMA also, right? P, D, Q. D is the differencing, the number of differencing of data you have done to convert the non-stationary into stationary. So all this we have discussed now, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. Now let us summarize this through the couple of steps. First what you have to do, the entire conclusion of ARIMA process that 3-4 sessions that I have taken, that summary I am sharing with you now. Suppose take, first take the data, visualize the data, understand the pattern, draw the graph, think whether it is stationary or not. If the data are stationary, you directly come this step, if the data are stationary. You plot your SCF graph and PACF graph and select P and Q, your D will not come into the picture. Select P, Q depending on the your data pattern and the plot and the kind of choreogram uh, structure, you can select P, Q and you can complete your model, you can run the model. But if the data are non-stationary, if the data are non-stationary, suppose data are non-stationary, if not, look at if not, in that case what you do, you first do the differencing which we have discussed in this session today. You first do the differencing, so this is your actual data and do the differencing part. Take this data now and start your SCF and PACF and check the ARMA etc. because here in that case you might have a D equals to 1 or D equals to 2 depending on the number of differencing steps that you have done. So if the data are non-stationary, first you do the differencing and check the decubular test which we have discussed now and stop there unless until data becomes stationary continue the process of differencing. Once it is done, your D will be finalized, D will be finalized here now, D will be finalized and then you select P and Q based on that data and go for AR or MA or ARMA process. There is no ARMA, only AR, MA or ARMA, effectively only the differencing part if the data are non-stationary, the differencing process has to be done and decubular test has to be used to, to check whether the data becomes stationary or not. This conversion process comes under I part. 
differencing part, integrated part. Because it's a to some extent the part of mathematical integration, therefore they call it is integrated, but effectively it's a AR autoregressive differencing MA process. That's it. Now, one more part remember if the data are seasonal, if the data are seasonal, in that case you cannot do the differencing this way. Here, what did what you are doing? You are doing y1, y2, y3, y4, and you are taking a differencing y2 minus y1, right? Y3 minus y2. So this way you are doing the differencing, right? But if the data are if the data are seasonal, in that case you have to take year on year basis differencing. So quarter to quarter, suppose you have a quarter on quarter to quarter basis data, right? You have like this, say quarter 5, quarter 6, so you write quarter 5 here, quarter 6 here, quarter 7 here, quarter 8 here, like this way is then a quarter 9. So this way, suppose what I am trying to say, share with you is that, you when you take the quarterly data, seasonal data, in that case, do not subtract from Q2 to Q1 to check your Dickey Fuller or say, differencing process. You subtract Q5 minus Q1 because that is your say first quarter, say April quarter. This is your April quarter of next year. This is your say June quarter. This is your say January quarter, last quarter. This is your December quarter. So, you quarter to quarter differencing you have to do. Look at here. If the data follows seasonality, then use 12 points differencing, scale down the data by taking difference if not immediate period. 12 point means it is a monthly, if it is a monthly. But if it is a quarterly, then you can take 4 period. So, it is depending on say 12 or 4 depending on the quarter like in you know, a period, whether it is a monthly data or it is a quarterly data. If it is a monthly data, then you have to subtract January to January, February to February. Do not subtract from February minus January because it is not a sequential data, it is a seasonal data. So, otherwise your variation will not be checked effectively and seasonality conversion to decentralized data or to some extent stationary data will not be done effectively because seasonality is involved there. But if it is a quarterly data then you subtract from quarter to quarter, April to April, previous year April. So, the, in this case 4 differencing will be done and then you can take the data and you can carry forward your forecasting process. I believe it is clear to everybody. So, this is what the overall summary. First you check the data stationary or not. If stationary, go to directly SCF and PSF graph, select P or D and complete the model, AR or MA or ARMA. If not, that means data are non-stationary, you do the differencing. If the data are seasonal, then differ, do the differencing in seasonal manner, either month to month differencing or quarter to quarter basis. But in general, if the data are non-stationary and steady data like you know in a sequential data are there like you know time temperature or etc. or say crude oil price, you are checking day wise or say stock price. In that case, what you do? Just take the older data, immediate past data and lack lacks and take the differencing. So far, what we have discussed and check the Dickey Fuller test. Once the differencing are done, non-stationarity conversion are done, Dickey Fuller testing are over and then you go to that data and start developing your SCA, PSCA and you know P select your D, sele D selection are done, P, D and complete your ARIMA model and make the feature prediction. This is the overall process of ARIMA, right. Here if you would like to see the final summary, you can see for AR model overall summary, your you know we know that correlogram reading, your SCF will have exponential decay but PSCF will have a cutoff, right. PSCF will have a cutoff, SCF will have a exponential decay. This is for AR model. In MA model, in MA model, for MA case, this will become, for MA case, this will become your SCF, this will become your PSCF. Detail we have discussed because SCF is sufficient to select for MA process because you are considering only the error term, right? Only error term, so they are already independent, you do not need to check the multicollinearity or you do need to remove the partial effect. Direct data you can take and you can, because you have already done the, check the data and all the error for term you are adding in your MA process. Now, if you are confused and you are not able to select the model, suppose both are having some, you know, standing point, in that case you can select ARMA PQ or both are having exponential decay, you are confused to select, then in, you can you can select ARMA 1 or, or ARMA 2 to maximum. This is what the total summary of AR, MA and ARIMA. There is no ARIMA and ARMA, right? And there is no ARIMA. ARIMA comes only in the beginning. Effectively, ARIMA should come in the beginning, but I have discussed in my entire module of ARIMA, the ARIMA part, the final part at the end. We have started with AR process, we have spent significant time on that because that is the major part of model. Actual lags you are taking, actual data you are taking and actual regression doing, you are doing, but it is auto regression, that is it. And then you go to MA process if you would like to include the error terms with the mean data that we have discussed. Then we understood the ARMA process and then we are going to ARIMA because if the data are non-stationary, then only you need to convert non-stationary to stationary and then this data you get and then you check either of them. 
that's it so this is what the overall process of arima so now let's illustrate this arima model through one excel data here we have come to the excel and if you see this column column number b here we have taken a new data not the tcs data uh, so this data it's a recycling company uh, us product handling company so cerebra integrated technology so we have taken their data and this data to some extent follow the non stationarity the tcs data that we have illustrated earlier does not follow non stationarity to some extent that was stationary so therefore we have taken a new data of last 3 months say like you know october to december same way and then this data we have plotted here you can see this data let me you know make it like this and then you know here you can see the graph look at this graph so this graph is nothing but a non stationary data you can see here block wise it is changing just we have taken 3 month data if you take more data you will get to know suppose this data is following non stationarity here you can see the data is shifting uh, from uh, location to location so it's to some extent non stationarity so you cannot directly run this data for your arima model right so you need differencing so we have done the differencing here you can see the differencing this graph let's see first the process of differencing look at here we have done the differencing here look at yt minus yt minus 1 so delta yt the way we have illustrated so if you make it increase the length of this you will get to know some yeah this all this calculation we have done here you can see suppose this one say you can see yt minus yt minus 1 so this is for what your delta yt so we have done this first order differencing and then this data this column number d will be our input data sets because this data is a stationary data here you can see the graph so suppose only first order differencing process we have illustrated here and the entire arima calculation we have done like arima process in the previous session we have done it but you can use your python and you can test all this dicky fuller process that i have told you now suppose this data are stationary now first order differencing are stationary you can see the data now look at the data range it is 0.6 to uh, you know point uh, minus 0.8 and it is in between the range it is the fluctuation has gone down too much right so it in between one gap 1.5 gap in the range so you can say that to some extent this data are stationary it's it's a quite small range but this one has a like 5.5 to almost 8.5 so it's a big range where there but this data does not have much range so we are assuming that this data are say stationary so we have taken the first order differencing as our input data to the arma so this is your stationary data suppose this column number d now now what we will do let me put a color so that you can understand better you, you should not have any confusion so if you come here and if you put a different color say this color right so this is your differencing data first order differencing data we are assuming that this is stationary the first one are not stationary now after differencing you do simple arma process that we have done you take the average of this data then calculate the center of them calculate the center of them right center of them and then next step you initialize your residual suppose it is zero then you start your forecast so this is your beta and gamma you have to optimize it the way we have done in arma process same we are repeating the arma now just we have done the differencing right and then you get your forecast with your center data after differencing and then again you get the residual with your forecast and then again use this residual and the center data you get your next forecast look at here you get your next forecast and drag that you get the forecast now this is the forecast with your center data and the error term right so one term of one one arima one one we have taken to some extent you can say finally arima one 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 you can see here arima one 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 right because we are taking first order differencing d equals to 1 in this case d equals to 1 p equals to 1 q equals to 1 so this we are taking right so now you get the forecast so this is your final forecast now you can optimize this here in this not in this sheet but other in other sheet i have done the optimization also here you can see the optimization of beta 1 and gamma 1 you can go to data and you can go to solver and you can optimize the data so you have we have done the optimization and you got the final beta on beta gamma on and the corresponding forecast come back to this sheet again so now here what you do you do the final forecast 
So final forecast here, you, I have written here, you can see the final forecast, look at the yellow cell, let me increase the font size. This final forecast are nothing but in terms of delta yt. Because this is your center data, this is your center data and this is your delta yt, right? So this forecast whatever you will get in terms of delta yt. So here this is actually this forecast, you look at column number n, this forecast is, is nothing but your based on your center data like ARMA process. Now that if you go back, that will be in your with in terms of delta yt. So this delta yt minus mean data minus this mean data, we have placed with small data yt. Remember the small yt term of ARMA model? So that we have replaced now. This is in terms of forecast of small yt. Now that you have to replace with that you can readjust this if you readjust after calculation, you will find this. Now this is your forecast in terms of delta yt, not the final. Now what you have to do? You have to replace delta yt with yt minus yt minus 1. That if you do here, you will get any forecast of any period. Suppose here we have done the forecast for 25th period, you can see here. So now if you see forecast for 25th period are nothing but the actual yt minus 1 of 24th period. Look at here, yt minus 1, so you replace this, yt forecast equals to yt minus 1 will come here. So yt minus 1, y24, b24, plus 0 0.002 the adjustment plus the coefficient beta 1 coefficient you can say into the corresponding delta yt minus 1 this is your delta yt minus 1 minus this error term here it, it comes as a minus but in general it is another gamma right. So gamma into the error term the previous error term you just do it. So this is your forecast for 25th period with your ARIMA model. In Excel, we have done the illustration. Similarly, I have shown one, one more illustration. Suppose forecast for the say 48th period. So in order to do the forecast for 48th period, you take the data of 47th period. Look at the data of 47th period, the actual yt minus 1 and the delta yt and the error term. Because final formula we have done here. So this in this final formula, you put the data and you get the forecast. This is your forecast. You would like to see the accuracy level. Here you can see. Suppose for 47th, I am talking about, if you think, the data here, look at here. So 48th period actually 6.8 and the error term if you see the error term is nothing but just you know minus 0.21 and here if you see the forecast is coming out to be 7.1. So it is almost closer to the actual forecast and the error term with your data sets also. So therefore this is the forecast for ARIMA model. So what is the summary of this? final illustration. First you do the differencing that means you convert the non-stationary data into stationary. Then select your order based on the differencing process. Suppose you have taken one order of differencing and we are assuming that this is the stationary data. Then you start your ARMA process. So this all this actually nothing but the ARMA calculation. It is nothing but the ARMA calculation. You can recall the ARMA session. So that we have done but now you have to do the adjustment of your data this adjustment because you have taken the difference we have done here and then you can make forecast of any period that you want you just follow the process and drag it you will get the forecast. This is what the ARIMA of final module or final process of autoregressive integrated moving average process. I hope it is clear to everybody. Thank you.